The old guard, Republicans, it's over. Obviously, we are waiting for the final results in New Hampshire. But when I saw the results of Dixville Notch, a little tiny town in northern New Hampshire, it's basically part of Canada. That is historically the first town that always votes in that state. They voted 1201, the Tuesday of the primary. When I saw how they voted, I was like, check Raj. All right, why? Because they've been wrong a lot. And all six votes went for Nikki Haley, basically a nail in the political coffin. Now, if you look back to 2016, John Kasich won Dixville Notch. How'd that turn out? Trump stomped him by 19 points in the state like 12 hours later. And it's this six-person town is reliably wrong on both sides, actually. In 2020, the Democratic ticket, they voted for Mike Bloomberg. Remember that? The out-of-touch totalitarian billionaire who wanted to take away your 40-ounce sodas? Then Bernie Sanders went on to win the states and then general anyway. And before that, even as far back as 2004, the Huffington Post noted the Dixville Notch as a politically irrelevant ghost story. But Nikki Haley is out today touting this as some kind of win, saying, it's a great start to a day in New Hampshire. Thank you, Dixville Notch. I, okay, I, I don't know if she's historically illiterate or what, but this is the political kiss of death. She's also saying in a statement that she's basically not dropping out until after she sees how she does on Super Tuesday, which isn't until March. Even saying that she's the last hope to get our party and our country back on track and we're going to get the job done. Okay, really? Because... Looking at the polls ahead, the one after today is Nevada, which has Trump up by 65 points. Then the state of South Carolina, of which she was the two-term governor of, where even Tim Scott, the senator that she appointed originally in that vacant seat, endorsed Trump, where she's down by, oh, 29 points. And the states for Super Tuesday on March 5th, Alabama, Trump's got her by 53. Alaska, he's got her by 65. Arkansas, 67. California, up by 63. Colorado, Trump's got her by 63 again. Maine, Trump's got her by 67. Massachusetts, Trump's up by 43. He's got her by 59 in both Minnesota and North Carolina. Oklahoma, Trump's got her by 45. Tennessee, he's got her by 55. Texas, 68. Utah, 27. Progressive Vermont, of all places, 28. Virginia, Trump's up by 45. So how are you going to get the country back on track if you can't get elected? I mean, it's pretty apparent that the voters don't want your track, Nikki. You're not leading in a single poll. You have no path to victory. It's not even close. If Nikki Haley wins tonight, folks, I swear I will come back here and do a handstand in the studio on live TV. The, but I'm telling you, the old guard style Republican Party is dead, hanging by a few big name donors, holding on to hope that they will somehow become relevant again. We're not going back to that, though. Too many of us had been beaten down by the Romneys, the Bushes, the Cheneys, McCarthy's of the old guard who promised conservative policies. Then the second they were elected, they bent the knee to the Democrats, and it drove me insane. Trump was our taste of punching back, and we're not going back to that sweater vested, pop collar, high road, do nothing Republican Party. We just aren't. And all these types, the Lincoln Project acolytes, they have a choice to make. They can stop whining and get on board and help, which I will welcome with open arms, or continue to work against the party that they say they are trying to salvage. These rhino Republicans fight harder against our own party than I have ever seen them fight against Democrats. For God's sake, I mean, case in point, there was almost a Republican fistfight on the House floor over electing Kevin McCarthy as a speaker. When have you ever seen a Republican get that mad at the Democrats when they take away our freedoms, when they spy on us, when they call us domestic terrorists for going to school board meeting to defend our kids? I will wait. I mean, about never. This happened in my hometown, too. But since Trump emerged, they have been losing their grasp on the party. And parties change. That's fine. But this has all been in an effort to reclaim inner, inner party power. They have gone out of their way to tank the success of the new style Republican candidates. You know, they're trying to say, oh, you should, you should give us power back. See, the, the Republican candidates are losing under your leadership. It's handing victories to Democrats. For years, I was so unhappy with the Republican Party and who they put up, but they told people like you and I to get in line, donate what we could, help them carry it across the finish line, and we did. We did in large part, but they, they won't do the same thing. Now it's the rhino's turn to heed some of those same words and back the guy who has reshaped the political landscape for the better. But the way the rhinos are behaving is helping Democrats right now. And I'm looking at the people like the Lincoln Project that it just absolutely no values whatsoever. There is no more moderation, folks. There's no more getting along. There's no bipartisan. If it's bipartisan, it basically means Republicans cave to Democrats. And I don't want that. 
I want the electoral annihilation of the left. I want them stuffed into a corner with such insignificant minorities in every governing body in America that even San Francisco can be prosperous again. It's not Republican versus Democrat anymore. It's capitalism versus socialism, freedom versus totalitarianism. Those are your choices. And if you have an anti-Trump friend, it's time for a reality check. Because this might be the last chance anybody gets to change the direction of the country.